And the federal government is pushing to raise the minimum wage in line with inflation for a third straight year. Let's go to Canberra now. Joining us is the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers. Treasurer, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So what will your submission be? Well, we'll make a submission on Thursday, Pete, that the uh, wages of Australia's lowest paid workers don't go backwards. You know, we are enthusiastic champions uh, of the low paid uh, in our country and our submission will reflect that. Uh, but our focus this week, indeed every week, is ensuring that Australians can earn more and keep more of what they earn, and our submission will reflect that. OK, so if I'm working things out from the desk here, Jim, if CPI is roughly at about 3% by June, is that a figure that you're leaning towards, 3 to 4%? Well, as you know, we don't put a figure on it in the submission that we make. We make it clear this time, uh, like we did the first on the first two occasions in uh, government, uh, that we don't want to see low-paid workers go backwards. The definition of low-paid worker is a matter for the Commission, uh, and the Commission will take into consideration all of the economic data, including the inflation numbers. Mm. But one of the reasons why we've got wages growth in our economy after a decade of deliberate wage stagnation is the way that this Albanese Labor government has championed uh, the prospects and priorities of low-paid workers uh, in our country and in our economy and people can expect to see that again on Thursday when okay. we make that submission. Once you've got this wage increase, though, then you've got the tax cuts that start in July 1. Won't that just drive inflation, making your job and the RBAs more difficult? No. Uh, and the reason for that is we don't have an inflation challenge in our economy because our lowest paid workers are earning too much. Mm. Uh, and we've been very careful with the design of the tax cuts, which will ensure that every taxpayer gets a tax cut on the 1st of July and 84% of Australians will get a bigger tax cut. What we've done is we've made sure that that doesn't put additional pressure on inflation. It's the same sized uh, tax cut overall in total as the one that it replaces. And so we don't expect that to put additional pressure on inflation. The Treasury and the Reserve Bank have made uh, similar comments over recent months. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been providing this cost of living help in a way that takes some of the edge off inflation rather than add to it. And we recognise that when it comes to these cost of living pressures that people are under, uh, one of the best ways to help people deal with that is to make sure they're getting decent pay and also to make sure they're keeping more of what they earn our submission of the minimum wage uh, decision is part of that and the tax cuts on the 1st of July are part of that too. News poll has got you heading for minority government uh, next year, Treasurer. That's a trend that we saw in Tasmania over the weekend. Will that make your task more difficult? Well, first of all, the Tassies have got a, a very different uh, electoral system and when it comes to opinion polls, they don't always pick the outcome of elections even a week or two out from... Uh, election day and it's it's probably around a year from election day and so uh, the thing I'd say about those opinion polls is you know we have always anticipated that the next election will be close and hard fought we don't take any outcomes for granted when it comes to the next election uh, we are working our tails off around the clock uh, to try and give people the government that they need and deserve a big part of that is helping to ease some of these cost of living pressures that people are under my job is not to respond to the political cycle when I put the budget together, it's to respond to the economic cycle. And that's why you'll see a combination of cost of living relief, budget repair, and also laying the foundations for longer term growth in our economy by focusing on investment. All right. Just finally, as um, one of Brisbane's highest profile figures, uh, we have uh, done plenty of coverage on the Olympics and the missteps so far by the state government. Have you got any concerns about stadium plans so far, Treasurer? No, I think the Olympics are going to be amazing, Pete, and I think uh, all of South East Queensland, indeed, uh, all of Australia, uh, will be very proud of the Olympics that are delivered in 2032. Uh, it's not unusual uh, for there to be, uh, you know, a range of views about the best way to go about building these stadiums, uh, but I think the Olympics are going to be incredible. I'm very, very optimistic. Mm about what they will mean uh, for uh, Queensland, but for Australia more broadly as well. Uh, we will build what needs to be built uh, and it will be uh, the kind of Olympics which is befitting a, a mm. great sporting nation like Australia. Wouldn't a new, just wrapping up here though, wouldn't a new stadium have been a, a true legacy item though, instead of, um, you know, heading off to, to Nathan at a stadium that the Broncos didn't want 20 years ago? 
Oh, I had lots of good afternoons at uh, so, no, I, when the Broncos were I have playing recollections there. there too, but I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> geez, there's some I cobwebs it was and some dust there now. It was about two minutes walk from my mate Duke's house, and uh, so I thought it was brilliant when they were playing at QE2. Some very fun afternoons uh, around that time. But I, I understand there's a, always a range of views about stadiums. Uh, the federal government is playing its part, investing billions of dollars uh, in the Olympics, and that's because we believe in it. And I believe that the state government will land uh, something that we can all be proud of. All righty. Jim Chalmers, appreciate your time as always. Chat to you soon.